Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sandra and I'm a nurse practitioner. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about the poison oak rash, the poison ivy rash, and ways you can help prevent it as well as treat it. So the poison ivy or the poison oak rash is an allergic contact dermatitis and it happens from exposure to the oil Urushiol, which is found in the plants of poison oak, poison ivy, and poison sumac. It is found in any part of the plant. It's a very sticky, clear substance, and it's very hard to get off the skin. So this contact dermatitis develops when the skin comes in contact with this oil. So exposure to this urushiol oil can occur through four ways. So the first way is coming in direct contact with the plant itself, and it touches your skin and it causes that reaction. The second way is by your clothing touching the oil or brushing up against the plants and collecting the oil and then you end up touching the clothing and that can cause the rash. Another way is touching animals that have come in contact with poison oak, poison ivy and now they have the oil on their fur and you go to pet them, you go to pick them up and now you have come in contact with the oil as well. And then another way of exposure is if you are burning the plants and you inhale that smoke that has the oil, that can also cause a reaction as well. So this oil is found on all parts of the plant, on the leaves, on the stem, on the flowers, on the roots. There is not a part of the plant that does not contain this oil. So there is no part of this plant that is safe to touch. Poison oak, poison ivy is commonly found in wooded areas, in marshy areas. This little area behind me there are some signs about poison ivy and i've actually seen a bit of poison ivy along the tree lines people are often exposed when they're hiking or walking on nature trails or camping and they just don't know those plants are there and then they come in contact with it Those are the most common areas to find it, but it can also be found in gardens, in landscaping. And so you really have to be careful and become familiar with what poison ivy looks like. So I'm no expert when it comes to identifying poison ivy or poison oak, but I do know the saying, leaves of three, let them be. So if you see a plant with three leaflets coming out, don't touch them because there is a good chance that is poison oak or poison ivy. So the first and most obvious way to prevent poison ivy rash is to not come in contact with the oil. And this is through barriers. So if you're going to be out in the woods, if you're going to be clearing out branches or leaves or working in a garden, make sure you wear long sleeves, long pants, closed toed shoes, vinyl gloves. Urushio oil can still permeate rubber gloves. So you wanna use a vinyl glove. Leather or other fabrics can absorb the oil and therefore you wanna to try to stick with a vinyl glove, which is the least likely to absorb this oil. So if you're going to be out hiking, stay on the trails, stay away from the areas that say there could be poison ivy and avoid contact with the wild plants. That is the surest way of avoiding contact with poison oak or poison ivy. So if you do come in contact with the poison ivy or poison oak plants, it is very important to wash the skin as soon as possible. And that can significantly decrease the chances of developing this rash. The sooner you can wash this oil off your skin, the less reactive it will become on your skin. Research has shown that there is reduced reactivity when this oil is washed off the skin after exposure within the first 20 minutes. So the way you wanna wash is to use soap and water. You can use Dawn dish soap and copious amounts of water to rinse off the oil. You don't wanna just be smearing it around on your skin, but you wanna really work it up off the skin. You can also use a washcloth to scrub on the skin, but you have to rinse it off with a lot of water. You can get in the shower and really, really rinse really well and get that oil off the skin. Think of it as some car grease and as hard as you scrub, as hard as you try, sometimes it's almost impossible to get off. So even though you can't see this poison ivy oil because it is clear, it is that sticky and that bindable to the skin and therefore it really needs to be scrubbed off with a good amount of soap and water. The longer you wait to wash your skin after exposure, the less effective washing will be. That oil can penetrate within the skin within 10 to 20 minutes and the rash will usually appear within four hours to four days after exposure. And so that first 20 minutes is really crucial to get that oil off your skin. 
even though you won't develop the rash within that time frame. And therefore it's so important to get that oil off your skin as soon as possible, ideally within the first 10 to 20 minutes after exposure. Any clothing or pets that have come in contact with the oil also needs to be washed very thoroughly. So wash the clothing separately from your other clothing in the washing machine with detergent and water. And this oil can stay on your clothing for a long period of time. So if you know you've come in contact with poison ivy, it's really important to wash your clothing. Pets that have been exposed to the oil need to be washed very thoroughly in a bath, washed with lots of soap and water to get that oil off of their fur because anything they come in contact with will transfer the oil to anything they touch, which could be your hands, the furniture, their bed. So give your pet a very thorough bath. So most cases of poison ivy or poison oak rash can be managed at home. They usually resolve on their own within one to three weeks. There are a lot of over-the-counter creams and lotions that can help with the itching and discomfort of the rash. Calamine lotion or oatmeal baths can help lessen the itching and the symptoms associated with the rash and just ease some of that discomfort as the rash runs its course, which is typically within one to three weeks. Low-dose topical steroids have been shown by research to be pretty ineffective when they are applied to the rash, as well as topical antihistamines such as Benadryl, and those aren't shown to be very effective when it comes to relieving poison ivy symptoms. So some people have some pretty severe cases of poison ivy, and these are usually the ones we see in the emergency room or at the doctor's office. These patients often develop really large weeping blisters and they can be all over the body. I have seen some pretty severe cases over the years. So in these severe cases, the standard treatment of care is systemic steroids that you take in a pill form. So prednisone is usually the steroid that is given for these severe cases. Typically a high dose is given for five days and then gradually tapered up to three weeks. And your doctor or healthcare provider will tailor the dose for your individual case. If you stop taking the steroid early because you think the rash is getting better, you can have a rebound effect and that rash can just come right back. And so it's really important to finish the steroids as your doctor prescribes them. Now, some people are concerned that the fluid within the blisters can spread the rash to other parts of their body or to other people. But research has shown that it's not the fluid within the blisters that spreads the rash. It's the urushio oil itself on the plants that can easily spread when it comes in contact with the skin. That's why it's so important to wash this oil off of everything thoroughly so that it doesn't spread to other parts of your body or to other family members. And then another thing that can happen with these open blisters is they can get a secondary infection and sometimes may need an antibiotic. And so it's really important to monitor the rash, make sure there's no increased swelling or redness and to seek medical attention when necessary. So like I said, almost all cases can be managed at home with some over-the-counter creams and lotions Prevention is key. If you don't wanna even have to deal with this rash, just try to prevent it through the ways that I mentioned. All right, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational for you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you get all my new videos. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.